Monet's impression sunrise to John Constable's rainstorm over the sea. What's the link here? Well, they're both seascapes, dull. Uh, so they're both oil-based sketches that were done in the open air. Boring! Um, so they're both by artists who were shunned by the art establishment. That's a bit more like it, yeah? So Monet was pushing against the closed door of Paris's Le Salon and John Constable was desperate to be a full member of the Royal Academy, but couldn't get in. He was not accepted until he was 53. This is Constable, the guy who painted those idyllic English countryside scenes that you've seen on jigsaws and biscuit tins. He was a radical and here he is. He's quite a dashing bloke really, isn't he? Something a little bit David Cameron about him. And in more ways than one, he was a Tory boy. In fact, if he was around today, I'm pretty sure he would have been a real pain in the backside Brexiteer. It makes me laugh then that his most famous painting, The Hay Wayne, just wouldn't sell in England. Nobody wanted it. Eventually, it was a Frenchman who bought it and took it to France. And according to Constable's letters, that really pissed him off. But Paris is important, and that would have annoyed him too, because the French really liked what he was doing when no one in England did. Uh, and the same goes for Turner. They love this idea of these artists who were trying to depict nature, capture sunlight, which is exactly what, of course, the Impressionists started to do some 45 years later. So Rainstorm Over the Sea is like an Impressionist painting, which is probably why I like it, because if I'm honest, I'm not a big fan of Constable's rural traditional work, but this really appeals to me. Maybe there's something else going on here because it's painted in my hometown, that's Brighton. And better still, it's painted at the beach, which is literally at the end of my road, because Constable's house is not 300 metres from my own front door. It's amazing to think that he sat on that beach and did it. The other thing is he hated Brighton for the same reasons that I absolutely love it. He said it was indecent. He said it was Piccadilly by the sea, full of men walking around in their dressing gowns. And I love the fact that he hated it for all the bohemian reasons that those of us who live here love the place. And he was very, very prolific when he was here gave him so much because he'd look out his window on one side and see the sea and then you've got the downs, the rolling countryside over to Shoreham. He painted something like 150 pictures in four years. That's about one every 10 days. But he always was a really prolific artist. Before Brighton, he lived up on London's Hampstead Heath where he painted over 100 paintings just of the sky. He saw that as a subject in its own right. He said, we don't see anything until we understand it. So he was a weather watcher. He literally tried to understand how clouds were made, how rainbows were formed, in order to paint them better. And this painting captures the drama of nature. Black thunderous clouds, the distant torrential downpour, and I love how the beach and sea seem more considered or more detailed, but the rainburst is just that, it's a burst of paint. You can picture the speed of the brush swiping down the paper. It's rapid, it's fleeting, and it has to be. Because Constable used to take his little paint box, sit it on his knees, sit on the beach, paper on top, and start to paint. And sometimes you'd have to be quick, especially if the rain's coming in. Do the job and get back home. But there's something else here, isn't there? There's a, there's a mood that perhaps is a bit dark and a bit brooding. To understand that, we need to know what was going on in his personal life. Now, for all of him being a bit of an asshole, he was a great family man. He had seven children in total. And he absolutely adored them, so much so that it caused comment in polite society. It just wasn't done for a father to love his kids like he did. And he completely adored his wife, Maria, as well. In fact, she's the reason they came to Brighton. She suffered with tuberculosis, and the idea was to get her away from London down to that sea air and see if it could help her health. It might have bought her a bit of time, but sadly, in 1828, a few months after the birth of baby number seven, Maria died aged 41 and it completely knocked Constable for six. Now, we don't know when this painting was done in that four year period, but it's possible that it was done as her health deteriorated. You know, maybe this is the oncoming storm that he's anticipating, or indeed it could be done just as she died and she's that beautiful ray of sunlight coming down from the heavens. He was completely distraught when he lost her. He packed the seven kids up, went back to London and struggled to raise all of them on his own. And a year later, he was finally accepted into the Royal Academy as a full member. But as he probably said at the time, who gives a shit? I mean, he had nothing left to prove and no one to prove it to. And as a result, his painting starts to change slightly. It becomes a lot looser, more free. I guess he's not trying to capture the accuracy of nature, but more the feelings that it gives us. But he didn't have long to do that. He died 
age 60 a few years after. He was still hugely underappreciated in England that he loved so much. In fact, when they cleared his studio out, some people picked up some of his paintings for as little as three quid. They took his body high up above London into the beautiful Hampstead graveyard where he was buried next to his wife Maria underneath that big London sky. Thank you.